This morning, I want to tell you a story uh, told by Eric B. Hare. Anybody heard of Eric B. Hare? He's a very famous Adventist storyteller. And um, I heard this story, and uh, it was a very good one. He has a, a devotional. What's the name of that, boys? Uh, do you remember? It's a test. I'm going to put him on the spot. Make God first. So if you like lots of good stories, it's meant for young people, supposedly, but I love the stories in them. So um, it's, a, it's a great devotional. I don't know if it's out of print or, or not, but uh, you can probably find it. If any of you know John Seeger or others that sell used Adventist books, um, it's a blessing. There was a young man, his name was Paul, and Paul was a canvasser. He worked for the American Bible Society. And uh, he had been out canvassing, and he had been going door to door. And as he went, there was, uh, he noticed something strange. There was a very tall gentleman that was following him around. Uh, he could, when he went door to door, he could see him, that he was in, a, in the distance following him. And he began to be a little nervous about that. And so he... Uh, but he continued on, you know, he, he prayed that the Lord would keep him safe and he continued to travel from door to door and he got finally finished up his day and uh, was again still a little nervous because he still saw that gentleman and he, he went to the bus stop to return to his place where he was staying. So he got on the bus and lo and behold, the gentleman got on the bus too. And uh, he began to get even more nervous, the fact that he was now in the bus with them. And uh, so he continued to pray, and as the bus took him to the train station, he, he thought, oh boy, I hope everything's going to turn out okay. But as he got off the bus and got into the train, he did not see the tall man. So he began to have a little more peace. So he got onto the train and he was tired. It was a long day. Canvassing is a, is a, um, it can wear you out, especially if it's a, uh, if you're walking long distances. And so he got, he said, I'm gonna find a car all by myself and get in there and I'm gonna rest, and take some good, get a good sleep. And um, so he got, he found his car, he got in there and he, settled in and started to relax and put his head back and lo and behold guess who came into the door of that car it was that tall gentleman that had been following him all day he began <laughs> to be nervous and uh especially when the man said to him do you carry a lot of money and uh he said no and uh you know, he had seen him go from door to door, so in his mind he's thinking, this isn't good because, you know, he knows that I've been selling different things. And so he said, no, I don't carry a lot of money. And he said, well, uh, do you have 500 lira? And he said, no, I, I don't have that. And the man said, okay, well, do you carry any weapons? <laughs> and the the general or the the canvasser said, "Yes, I do." How about you? He said, "I sure do as well." And he and he pulls out a very uh, scary looking pistol, and the the the, uh, the man says to him, "Let me see your weapon." And so the canvasser <laughs> reaches down into his bag, and what do you think he pulled out? His Bible. You may have heard this story before. If you have, I thought. <laughs> he, he pulls out his Bible and he says, that's not a weapon. What, you, you can't do anything with that. He said, oh, yes, that, that uh, gun there is only, you know, you can only shoot one person at a time. But this can kill several wicked men with it. And he said, what are you talking about? He says, I've killed six wicked men with this Bible. And he said, what are you talking about? Tell me what you're, what you're saying, because you can't do anything like that with a book. And he said, well, let me show you how I did it. So he opened up the book to him, and he shared with him all of the scriptures where 
Christ was so good to him and, and his salvation story and the man's heart began to get softened and he realized how much he needed the Lord. And he came to the point where he said, show me more, show me more. And he, he continued through the night to, to reveal that Bible study to that gentleman to the point where as, it, as the time came to, to leave uh, the train, the gentleman, it was his stop. He said, I don't want to leave, but know this, that you killed that wicked man and saved me from doing something that I would definitely regret the rest of my life this evening. So God's word is very powerful. It's the most powerful weapon that we can use for ourselves as well. His promises are sure. And as we are faithful to the Lord, he will protect us. And as we use his word, he is faithful as well. So thank you for listening.